Welcome to the Point of Impact Podcast. I'm Rick McDaniel. It's great to have you joining us today. And today's a little special because we're doing a vidcast. So we're not just going to have the audio podcast, but the vidcast as well. And we're doing that for our friends at Pray TV, Pray.com, the Pray app, because it is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I want to dedicate this 150th episode of the Point of Impact Podcast to talking about mental health. Those of you that are joining us for the first time, maybe through this vidcast, uh, just real quick, if you want to know more uh, about uh, anything involving me, I have eight books that I've written, including a devotional called This Is Living that's out right now, uh, articles, over 100 articles that I've written, speaking, YouTube, all that sort of stuff, uh, reading plans on the Bible app, version, but just rickmcdaniel.com. Just go to rickmcdaniel.com and that will give you all that you need as far as uh, information about what you can uh, find out more about uh, High Impact Living, the Point of Impact podcast, my speaking and writing and other things that, that I'm up to. That's the best place to go for all of those things. Today is our uh, 150th episode and last of the season for this season that we started in September, and so we're excited to, to talk with you today about such an important subject as mental health. And when I think about where I would even start talking about mental health, I need to sort of just be clear uh, about where I stand in terms of things like grit and resilience, because I've talked a lot about them, because today I really want to talk about how we can support people with anxiety. And so it's it's really important to really listen to all this podcast and not just sort of grab a piece out because if you grab the first moments of maybe this podcast, you'd miss it. If you grab the last part of it, you'd miss the first part. So everything in context is so important. I believe in strongly in mental toughness and resilience in, in grit and all those things. Those are big parts of what I've talked about and written about, spoken about, and, and they are absolutely true. There's, there's no denying it whatsoever. And what we're going to talk about today is not the same thing as having just, say, um, endurance or perseverance through challenging situations. And that's why it's so important to take everything into context. It's also important to understand, you know, what, let's just look at some of these scriptures. Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. All right, well, that's it then, Pastor Rick. You know, there's nothing else to say. No issues with anxiety, just pray about it. But it's not, it's not that simple. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, don't worry about your life. Matthew 6, 25, you know, don't worry about your life. So just follow Jesus and don't worry and everything will be fine. Yes, those are principles that have to be practiced. We should pray about everything. We shouldn't give in to worry. First Peter 5, 7, God cares for you. Turn all your worries over to him. Absolutely. These scriptures are, are a marvelous pieces of wisdom for us about what we're to do when we have anxious thoughts and we experience worry and we come into situations where we're concerned about the future, about what's going on. And those things absolutely need to happen. We need to know that God cares for us, know that we can pray about anything, not worry about our life, turn things over to the Lord. Those things are all true, but we need to understand the difference between those challenges and someone that has mental health challenges as it's a regards to anxiety. In other words, there's a difference between a depressive mood, which several people in the Bible, Elijah, Jeremiah, Jonah, all had depressive moods. But there's a difference between that and clinical depression. There's a difference between spiritual weakness and anxiety, mental illness, anxiety. Those, those are not the same thing. Anxiety can be a mental illness. It isn't just a matter of being anxious about something. It's so important. That's why I dedicated this podcast to this very subject of making sure that we understand and are clear about the differences. Now, again, I'm working right now on a keynote message, Mental Strength Mindset, 10 Keys 
that 10 key mental practices. I can't wait to travel the country sharing this message. And if you want me to share it with your group or church or organization or conference, you know, you just contact form at rickmcdaniel.com. I'd love to come putting, putting it together right now. I think it's going to be a marvelous blessing and help to many, many, many people. So in no way, again, am I saying that we shouldn't have mental toughness, that the, the grit and resilience and perseverance and not giving up and not quitting. Those are all principles that I have been espousing and promoting for many years in spoken and written form. It is my call to be an inspirational, motivational speaker. And I, I, I stand by all that. But it's not the same thing as dealing with mental health issues. And so it's so important to understand that we need to be aware of the mental health issues that people are experiencing. Because when we end up kind of giving these platitudes or advice to people that are struggling with anxiety, it, it, it does not bless them. It, it does not help them. When your faith is important to you as a follower of Christ, and it's questioned or invalidated in some way because of mental health challenges that you're facing, that is a very negative thing that can end up stunting uh, uh, someone's faith in their growth and really set them back, even set them away from Christians or church. We don't want that. When, you know, when someone opens up about their anxiety, about their struggles, most of the time they are not looking for a solution or advice, or even, uh, you know, you might say religious or even scriptural platitudes or principles. They're really just looking for someone who will listen to them and be there for them. And unfortunately, many times what we can end up doing is moving straight into uh, giving advice, saying things that really end up in invalidating people. And those who are followers of Christ now, this is, this is not what we want to do. This is not how we want to treat our, our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's, that's not it. That's not, that's not what God has called us to do. He's called us to comfort. He's called us to give compassion. And in order to do that, we need to understand what, what's going on in people's lives. And we need to understand what we might be doing. For instance, you know, for some people, what seems harmless may actually be hurtful. People's feelings are valid. They deserve support. How can we support people with anxiety? How can we do that? And how can we avoid doing the things that will lead them to believe that we don't really care, that we don't love them and care for them, that we're not there to support them? We don't want to do that. So let's just think about some things that can commonly be said within Christian circles, the church, Christian fellowship, whatever terminology you want to use, that can end up being more harmful and hurtful than helpful to people who are struggling with anxiety. Let's just start with this, like anxiety is a sin. You know, it's, it's, it's a sin. The Bible says don't be anxious for nothing. So if you're anxious or you're worrying, then it's a sin. But someone who has a mental health challenge with anxiety, panic attacks, they're not purposefully giving into this. Cast your anxieties on him. Yes, that's what they're supposed to do. And they're doing it. And what they discover is that it's not enough for the challenges that they particularly face in their, in their lives, in their mental health. Someone who doesn't have these mental health challenges, when they feel anxious, when they're prone to worry, when they're, they're, they're tempted to give in and quit, then these kinds of scriptures that we read this morning, and, and many others, by the way, can really motivate, motivate us and help us to say, yeah, this is not the answer. I don't need to, to give in to these things. But when you have a mental health challenge, that's different. And we need to support people 
and understand the difference between these two things because they are different. How about this kind of platitude? You know, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. So in other words, if you're struggling, then it would be something like you're not praying hard enough. You don't have enough faith. Now, I'm a huge faith guy, huge believer in, in believing, in practicing faith. Absolutely. I have a whole believe uh, reading plan on the Bible app, for instance, which could help you greatly. But again, mental health challenges, that's a different story. You're not trusting God enough. Just trust God. But sometimes there needs to be more. There's something going on within a person's physiology. There's something going on that, that needs to be addressed. And, and medication might be the answer. Just like doctors can help people with other illnesses, infections, viruses, they can help with mental illness as well. And, and that's how we have to think about it. That's how we have to understand it and not kind of just make it seem like it's not important, but put it within the larger world of health and caring for people that have health. There are Christian counselors, Christian therapists, Christian psychologists, Christian psychiatrists, and they can do great work with people and really help them. And if you're challenged right now and you're listening to this and you're like, finally, somebody is saying what I've been struggling with and feeling, and you're just not getting where you need to get to with your friends, your fellow believers, maybe your church dynamic, then it's time to seek out some of these other professionals that can help you. And they absolutely can. You know, this idea, just give it to God. Give your words to God. And then someone would say, I do. And then they keep coming back. And they keep coming back. And then you talk with people, as I have for years as a pastor. For years when I pastored my church, I would hear people tell me, you know, uh, and they would come to me and I would direct them to a professional. And then they come back and they'd be like, oh, Pastor Rick, I just, I'm doing so much better. Yes. The doctor has really helped me. The therapist has really helped me. The medicine has really helped me with my anxiety. And, and now when I pray, I, I don't feel so much shame or, or guilt ridden or other things. That, that's the answer. You know, how have you prayed about it? You know, that's the sort of, have you prayed about it? Of course you should pray about it. And, and someone who's struggling with these mental illness challenges, mental health challenges, would say, I do. You know, people think, well, you know, what's wrong then? Well, I'm not turning away from God. It's just I have these, these mental health challenges that I can't seem to, to overcome. And I, and I need some extra help. Let's look at it another way in terms of physical health. So I believe in healing, in supernatural healing. I believe people can, not only do I believe it, I've seen it. I've seen people who've received healings, miraculous healings have taken place. At the same time, I know people who did not have a miraculous healing, but through the help of doctors, surgeons, therapies, they were made well. It's the same concept. Could be a depressive mood. It could be just real, just some anxious thoughts. And the answer is to realize God cares for you. Pray about everything. Don't worry about life. Practice this. Allow God's peace to come in. That scripture in Philippians, if you go on, it says the peace of God will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Fantastic. But if that doesn't work, then other steps need to be taken. Just like if you're prayed for and you're not miraculously healed, you don't experience divine healing, it's absolutely appropriate to then seek out medical help. And so it's the same concept, seeking out help through medicine for your mental health, just like you would your physical health. 
Here's another one. Your anxiety is spiritual warfare. Now, I believe in spiritual warfare. Absolutely. Positively. I am certain that there are principalities and powers, just like the book of Ephesians talk about forces of darkness. And there are times that we battle and in the spiritual realm. And those things can cause us to be discouraged or anxious or worried because things don't seem to be happening and we're coming up against this kind of strong opposition that is spiritual in nature. But not everything is necessarily spiritual warfare. You could go to a psychiatrist and they might give you some medication that clears out the anxiety and helps you then in your spiritual walk so that when you deal with spiritual warfare issues, which you will as a follower of Christ, you deal with them from a place of mental health and mental wholeness and you can discern then what's really going on and understand the differences between feeling these kinds of attacks and opposition versus a mental health issue of genuine anxiety. Big, big difference between, between the two. This idea, again, if you, you know, if you really trusted God, you wouldn't need a therapist, you wouldn't need medication. And it, these are dangerous things to say to people. They're not helpful. They are not helpful to them. They end up being hurtful. Instead, even if your heart's in, in, in the right place and you think people just need to trust God. But, you know, someone can go down a dark path and then start therapy and begin to see clearer and begin to love God and receive grace and and healing from God, but first they need help before they go down that path of darkness. We, we would never, in any kind of Christian ethic of love and compassion, ever want to see someone get to the place at the end of that dark road of taking their own life. And we would want to do everything we could to help them. And if praying, if godly counsel, if practicing scriptural principles, if that is not doing the work that it would do in people without a mental health issue, without a mental illness issue, then we need to do whatever we can, whatever is necessary so that we make sure that we care for them and we don't allow anything at all of a negative reality to enter into their lives. So it's discerning mental health, mental illness versus, and again, a depressive mood, clinical depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and just anxious thoughts and, and worrisome challenges. There's, there's a difference between these things. We can't lump them all together as if they're all the same. They are not all the same. This idea that, uh, you know, it's somehow um, selfish, like you're, like you're supposed to care about others and you're, you're putting everything on you. It's all about you. <laughs> you know, it's a mental illness issue. It's, it's not something someone chooses. No one would choose this. So it's not a selfish act. You say, why is it all about? It's about the illness. It's not about a person's selfish choices. And what they want to do is stop the anxiety so that they can be themselves. They can be the way God created them to be. So it's vitally, vitally important that we discern the differences here and we understand what is happening, what's really going on. So we don't hurt someone, stunt their walk with Christ, or even cause them to walk away from Jesus, walk away from the church because they think that the, 
the Christians, followers of Christ, the church does not care about their mental health challenges. Because we do. We do. We understand, we care, and we're here to help. That's the message that we want to be able to proclaim. Here's another one that in many ways is, is the most dangerous, which is just really kind of like silence. Like, and that's why, that's why I'm doing this today. That's why I'm doing this for Pray TV. Why I'm putting it on my podcast as well to get the message out that we will address mental health. That, you know, those who suffer have to suffer in silence. It's not a physical ailment, ailment, it's a spiritual one, or it's a mental one. You know, as soon as, as you mention something being wrong with your mind, if it was wrong with your body, great, let's pray. The Bible in James, the book of James says, uh, call the pastors, let them anoint with oil, and let's, the prayer of faith will make the sick person well. That's what the Bible says. I've seen it over and over again. It works. And we're, you know, more than happy to do that. Have entire healing services for that. But mental health is different. There's like silence. It's like, you know, not talked about. Not, not good. It's not what, it's not what, uh, that's not what Jesus wants for us as his followers. He wants us to, to rise up to this challenge because all the statistics are telling us, especially in younger generations, that they are struggling with mental health issues. And certainly the pandemic did nothing but make everything worse. And so in this dynamic, that is taking place where mental health challenges in many ways are like at an all-time high for the church, for believers in Christ, for followers of Jesus to be silent, that would be sin. We are to be compassionate and loving and caring about people's struggles and ready to help them in whatever way we can. That's what God has called us to do. A person's faith is not contaminated by their anxiety disorder. It's not a sin to have a mental disorder. It's not a, uh, you know, a persistent sin. It's an illness that needs to be treated. And when we see it that way, then we can pass by these, these statements that really are not helpful and we can, in fact, help people, support them toward their mental wellness, help them be healed mentally, just like we want to help them to be healed physically. And by the way, just if you want to, you know, just theological, just real quick, salvation is being healed spiritually. So God cares about our mind and our body and our spirit. He heals us spiritually when we're saved. Our soul is saved. In fact, the word in the Greek for heal can, it can be used interchangeably between spiritual and physical healing. So he heals our spirit through salvation. We accept Christ into our lives. We receive forgiveness for our sins. And we are made right with God. He heals us physically. By his stripes we were healed. The Bible says in the Old Testament, Isaiah. New Testament, I just quoted from the book of James. Anoint you with oil. Pray the prayer of faith. The sick person will be made well. And God heals mentally, emotionally as well. And God, just like in the physical healing, sometimes it's miraculous. Sometimes it is a divine, supernatural miracle. And sometimes God uses medicine. 
I would argue God gives surgeons incredible skill, gifts that to them. God gives therapists and counselors insights, supernatural insights. God's a part of the healing process, however it happens. But we need to make sure that we understand that part of that healing process is mental, not just spiritual salvation, not just physical and healings, but mental as well. And when we can have this kind of holistic understanding of healing from what the Bible teaches and from a Christian perspective, then we begin to help people, care for people, love people, and the church and followers of Christ are, are doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. And then mental health awareness is, yes, it fits in perfect. Gone is the silence. Gone are the sort of shameful comments and the put downs and you're not, you know, have enough faith and you're too selfish and you just need to give it to God and you're not trusting God. Gone, those, those things can be gone and they can be replaced with a proper understanding of how God wants to help people with gen genuine mental health and mental illness issues. While at the same time, just want to always have balance, while at the same time understanding that for those who don't and experience these moments of uh, depressive moods or anxious thoughts or worry that the Bible does teach us then to give everything to God and to trust in God that he will care for us and take care of it, which he does. And all of us who've walked with the Lord know this to be true. That has absolutely happened time and time again. So we're thankful for that. But to those of our brothers and sisters who are struggling and need help, be there for them. Support them. How can I support someone with anxiety and mental health issues? You can listen to them and guide them in the path that will lead them toward health and support them to believe this is just another way that God brings healing into their lives. It's just another way God uses. And if you do that, they're going to get well. They're going to be able to be themselves and you'll be a blessing to them. Thanks for joining us today here uh, on this special vidcast with, with Pray TV. Great to have you.